Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. In this lesson, we're going to continue our tutorial series on how to create a multiplayer video game using the Photon 2 plugin in Unity. Some of the things that we've talked about so far are the Photon View component, which helps synchronize game objects across the network. We've also talked about the Photon Transform View, which helps smooth out and synchronize the transform of a game object across the network. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about another very important element in developing multiplayer games, and that is using the Photon View component to send RPC functions across the network. RPC functions are essentially messages that you can use to send and synchronize data from one client to another. And I would say RPC functions are probably one of the most important principles when it comes to multiplayer game development. Now before we get started, I want to thank everyone who's been following along with this tutorial series. I know it can be difficult when you get all caught up on the available lessons and then you have to wait for me to publish the next one, but I am trying hard to get at least one or two of these Photon lessons out per week. And so if you're watching these videos prior to the completion of the series, I want to thank you for your patience and your persistence. We've received a number of comments from all of you asking us when the next video is going to come out and asking us to show you how to create this feature or that feature with regards to a multiplayer game. And the principle that stands out the most to me at this point in time is to show you how to create a character selection option, which will synchronize which character you've selected across the network. And so that's what we're going to do for this video using the RPC functions. Now before we begin, make sure that you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can get updates when we publish new videos. So here we have the same project that we've been working on open inside of Unity. And in between episodes, I've taken the liberty to add some UI game objects to our main menu scene. And those objects include this UI image object, which has a grid layout group attached to it. And as a child to this object, I've added four UI buttons. And so we're going to use these UI buttons to choose from four different character models that I've downloaded off the Unity Asset Store. And then we're going to synchronize that character model across the network. Now for your own project, I expect you to take some time to create a better menu system for your game. This is just an example that I whipped together in like five minutes. Now the first thing I'm going to do for this lesson is create a new script which will hold information about our local player and our local player will be able to personally change this information within the menu scene. And so I'm going to make sure that I'm within my scripts photon folder and I'm going to right click and then go to create C sharp script and we can call this script player info. Next I'm going to open up the script within Visual Studios. Once we have our script open in Visual Studios, the first thing I'm going to do is create some variables. Now we want this script to persist from scene to scene, and we want to be able to access this script from other scripts. And so I'm going to create a singleton for this script. So I'm going to type public static and then player info, and then I'm going to call this pi. The next variable that we need to create will hold the value of which character we have selected. And so this will be a public int, and I'm going to call this my selected character. And the next variable we need to create will be an array holding all the possible characters we can choose from. And so this will be a public game object, and we'll make it an array, and then I'm going to call this all characters. Now the next thing that we need to do is initialize our singleton and we'll do this within the on enable function. And so I'm going to type void on enable. And then within this function, we first need to check to see if pi is equal to null. And so I'm going to say if player info dot pi equals equals null. And if it is equal to null, then we want to set it equal to this. And so I'm going to say player info.pi equals this. Then we need to make a condition for if pi does not equal null. And so I'm going to type else. And then within this else statement, we need to first check to see if the current script does not equal the current singleton. And to do this, all we have to do is type if player info.pi does not equal this. 
Within this if statement, we are going to reset the singleton. And to do this, we're going to say destroy and then player info dot pi dot game object. And then we're going to set player info dot pi equal to the new this. And then outside this else statement, we want to make sure that we're not destroying this game object on load. And so I'm going to say don't destroy on load and I'm going to pass in this dot game object. So now that we have the singleton set up, let's initialize the my selected character variable. And we'll do this within the start function using player preferences. And so the first thing I'm going to do is check to see if the player preference exists. And so I'm going to say if player prefs dot has key and the key that we'll use will be something like my character. And so if it exists, then we want to set the my selected character variable equal to this value. And so I'm going to say my selected character equals player prefs dot get int and we're going to pass in the same string value. But if it doesn't exist, then we want to set the player prefs and this variable. And so I'm going to say else, and I'm going to say my selected character equals zero. And then we want to say player prefs dot set int. We're going to pass in the same key value. And we're going to pass in my selected character as the value. Now that should do it for this script. I'm going to delete our update function and then I'm going to save our script. Now the next thing that we need to do is create a menu controller script which will change this my selected character variable when we click on these four different buttons. And so I'm just going to go to our scripts folder. I'm going to right click, go to create C sharp script. I'm going to call this menu controller. I'm then going to open it up in Visual Studios. We can then delete our start and update functions because we're not going to need them at this time. And we can create a new function, which will be a public function that we can then pair to our four different buttons. And so I'm going to type public void and I'm going to call this on click character pick. And then we need to pass in a parameter and this is going to be an int parameter and I'm going to call it which character. Within this function, we need to first check to make sure that a player info singleton exists. And so I'm going to say if player info dot pi does not equal null, and if it does not equal null, then we're going to set the my selected character variable. And so I'm going to say player info dot pi dot my selected character, and I'm going to set it equal to the parameter that's passed into this function. And so I'm going to say equals which character. Now we also want to set the player prefs value. And so I'm going to say player prefs dot set int. I'm going to pass in the key, which is my character, and then we're going to pass in the which character parameter. We can then go ahead and save this and go back to Unity. Within Unity, let's go ahead and set up our main menu scene. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new empty game object, and I'm going to rename it to player info. We can then find our player info script and drag it onto the inspector with that object selected. We can then expand our all characters variable and I'm going to change the array size to four. I'm then going to find the location which I have my character prefabs. I'm then going to select each of my prefabs and drag it into the array. The next thing I need to do is set up our menu controller. And so I'm going to create a new empty game object. I'm going to rename this to menu controller. And then I'm going to drag our menu controller script onto the inspector. We now need to set up the on click function for each of our buttons. And so I'm going to select our four buttons. I'm going to scroll down and within the button component, I'm going to click this plus sign in the on click field. I'm then going to drag our menu controller game object into this field 
And with the drop down menu, I'm going to go to menu controller and select on click character pick. I then need to go through each of these buttons and set the parameter that will be passed in. And so for the first one, we want to just pass in a zero. For the second one, we want to pass in a one. For the third one, we're going to pass in a two. And for the fourth one, we're going to pass in a three. So now that we have our menu system set up, let's move on to the RPC function. So I'm going to go to our game controllers folder and I'm going to create a new script. And this is going to be for our avatar setup. So I'm going to go to create C sharp script. I'm going to call this avatar setup. And then I'm going to open it up in Visual Studios. Now with inside this script, we need to create a variable for our photon view. So I'm going to type private photon view, and it's not recognized. So I'm going to click on it, hold alt, press enter. And I'm going to click on using photon.pun. We can then call this variable PV. We then want to initialize this variable. And so within our start function, I'm going to type PV equals get component, and we're going to pass in photon view, and then parentheses and semicolon. We can then delete our update function, and in its place, we're going to create a new RPC function. So I'm going to add the tag PUN RPC, and then I'm going to type void, and let's call this RPC underscore add character. And then we need to add a parameter, which will be the value of which character we have selected. And this will be the data that we're trying to synchronize across the network. And so this will be an int, and I'm going to call it which character. With inside this function, we need to instantiate the character that we have selected. And so at the top, I'm going to add a new variable, and this is going to be a public game object. And I'm going to call it my character. And then with inside this function, I'm going to type my character equals instantiate. And then we're going to use the all characters array and the parameter that we've sent across the network to determine which character we want to spawn. And so within parameters, I'm going to type player info dot pi dot all characters. And then within square brackets, I'm going to say which character. We then need to set the position and rotation of this object. So the position will just be transform.position and the rotation will be transform.rotation. And we also want to set this character as a child to our player's avatar. So I'm going to hit comma and I'm going to add in this transform. It would also be a good idea to save this value that we've passed across the network. And so at the top, I'm going to create a new variable. It's going to be a public int, and I'm going to call it character value. We can then save the value that we passed across the network into this variable. So I'm going to say character value equals which character. Now, the last thing that we need to do inside this script is call our RPC function. And we'll do that within the start function. But we first want to make sure that we're only sending this from the local player. And so within the start function, I'm going to type if pv.isMine, which checks to make sure that we are the local player. Now, with inside this if statement, we need to call our RPC function. So I'm going to type pv.rpc. And then within parentheses and quotes, we need to pass in the name of our function. So I'm going to paste that in there. And then we need to determine who we want this RPC function to be sent to. And so I'm going to type RPC target and then dot all buffered. All buffered allows players who have joined the game after this RPC function has been sent to still receive it. And the last parameter that we need to pass in is the my selected character variable. And so I'm going to say comma and then player info dot pi dot my selected character. Leave it with a semicolon. We can then save this and go back to Unity. Once we're back in Unity, we need to find the location of our player avatar. So I'm going to go to our resource photon prefabs folder. I'm going to select our player avatar and then down at the bottom, I'm going to click add component and I'm going to type in our avatar 
setup script. I'm going to add that script. Now the last thing I need to do is turn off the visual components of our player avatar prefab. So I'm going to scroll up to our mesh render component. I'm going to disable that. I'm then going to expand our player avatar within the project window. I'm going to select the sphere that we have as a child and I'm going to disable the mesh render on that. I'm also going to remove the sphere collider because we don't need it for this game object. All right, so I think that's everything. So let's go ahead and build our project. Once your project is built, let's go ahead and hit play in the standalone and play in the editor. And so let's click battle, which will load us into the multiplayer scene. And here you can see that I now have a character model, which is a child to our player's avatar, which means that I can control this character in the same way that I would the player avatar. And so now that it's all working, within this local player, let's go over to our standalone and try and connect. So I'm going to select a different character and then I'm going to click battle. And now you can see that we have two characters in both clients. One is the robot and one is this little warrior. And the warrior I can control from this client, move him around, and then the robot I can control from the editor. And it looks like everything is synchronizing up. Now the aspect ratio for the standalone is different than what I have in the editor and that's why it might look a little bit different between the two. Now I'm going to play through it one more time but I'm going to use the other characters that I have. So I'm going to select the third one and click battle. And so here we can see we have this little medic character. And then I'm going to go to our standalone and I'm going to select the fourth one and click battle. And here you can see that we have this character which is another free asset that I downloaded off the Unity Asset Store. And all of these characters are actually developed by Unity. So it looks like everything is working just fine. And now I'd like to take some time to talk about the principles that we've learned about in this video so that we can better understand how they're working. Now, one of the comments we received was asking us to show how to synchronize the color of your avatar across the network. And so maybe you don't need a character selection option, but instead you're just sending different colors. And so this same game mechanic that we've created could be used to synchronize colors instead of characters. You could also add code to what we've created in this video and synchronize other features like what armor your character is wearing or what weapon they're using. There's a lot of possibilities. Now I want to talk specifically about RPC functions. So I'm going to close our standalone and I'm going to stop our editor from playing. And then I'm going to go back to Visual Studios and find our RPC function. Now the basics of an RPC function are first, you need to have a photon view. And so we have this photon view variable and we have a photon view component attached to this same game object. Secondly, you need to create your RPC function and an RPC function is identified by the PUNRPC tag. After the tag, the rest of the function looks like any other function, and you can pass in multiple parameters so long as the photon servers can serialize the data type of the parameter. And the parameters are super important because that's how you transfer information from one client to another. And so for this example, we're transferring the my selected character value from the current local player to all the other clients. Now the body of the RPC function is the code that will be executed on the receiving end of the RPC. And then finally, the way to send an RPC function is first you have to call your photon view and then you call the RPC function and you pass in the function name and then you specify who you want the RPC to be sent to. And then you need to list the values that you want to be sent as parameters. And that's RPC functions in a nutshell. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to create a multiplayer video game using the Photon 2 plugin in Unity. We were able to synchronize our character selection across the network using RPC functions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be helpful, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Also subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.